And finally, we have talked a lot already and covered many things, uh, but uh, sort of ending, I wouldn't say on a positive note, but ending on what we can do uh, because we have to obviously adapt to this new reality it will take time and uh, the biggest i think short-term issue is that we don't have so much time you're presenting us now with the fact that the shale oil production uh, shale gas production uh, which has been you know the biggest contributor to the energy increase the latest decade basically um, is is about to decline and uh, I personally, I think about, I mean, the, for example, when I think about how we heat houses uh, in, in most of the world, uh, it, I mean, in Europe, it's natural gas. In US, a lot of it's natural gas or it's coal and so on. But and in Sweden, we're using basically natural uh, nuclear and uh, or primarily, I would say, hydro and then nuclear. Um, but what we can do, I think, which is this is, has to do has actually to do with technology is that if we have solar panels on the roof in a sunny country for example the problem in a country like sweden is that we have a lot of sun for two three months in in the summer <laughs> right. and then we can't run them when we really need them in this in the winter time so then we rely on, on other energy sources but what we can do and a swedish guy or inventor uh, in sweden has done is he built a huge house uh, and he has a lot of sol uh, so uh, solar on, on the roof but what he's doing is overproducing a lot of sun, uh, generating a lot of uh, electricity from the solar. And he stores it into hydrogen in a, a huge, uh, in a lot of small tanks. Um, and then he can use that all year round, actually, uh, during the, the nighttime and during the winter. It's, it's an expensive alternative at the moment. It's, it's much more expensive than the alternative of just, you know, introducing a propane tank or something you have in the US. But it's technology that he's saying uh, if you make these tanks bigger, uh, now he's ha have to you know connect a lot of small ones, which is much ex very expensive uh, hydrogen tanks. Uh, the whole system and, and overall system is much more ex expensive, obviously. But uh, with the, this technology, we could at least conserve energy uh, by simply not using so much natural gas, for example, and also using more of the sun. The solar energy now, you know, it comes with the problem that you can't use it overnight and over you can't store it easily i mean batteries are very expensive very complicated and so on you can't just scale that up but with hydrogen and uh, oversupply of sun that could at least be one way to conserve energy uh, as i see going forward what's your uh, take on this yeah i mean so that's a that's a small solution for wealthy people and for people that have the luxury of, of owning their own home. I mean, even in a wealthy country like Sweden, um, an awful lot of the population lives in, you know, in, 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 in flats and in apartment buildings, and, and they don't have that option of putting solar panels on the roof or storing hydrogen and tanks in the, you know, underground or whatever. So uh, m my sense, Johan, is that, Technology, for all of its wonders, um, is uh, takes a long time uh, to penetrate the entire society in an affordable way. And so um, I, I think it's natural and understandable that, that, that as humans, we prefer a fix than, an, than, than actually a solution. Um, you know, well, let, let, let's find some way, mostly through technology, that we can cover up this problem or at least make it seem like it's gone away without addressing the underlying cause. And the underlying cause is that we use far too much energy in our individual lives and in our collective lives as, as, as a human society. And I am not naive, and I don't think there's very much possibility that we're going to change that, although individually, you know, some of us might make those kinds of choices like the, you know, the fellow that you, you just described. But, but collectively, um, you know, we're, we're more interested in the, you know, the football game or, uh, you know, what, what's happening on, uh, on television or social media. Most people are not spending a lot of their time, you know, worrying about energy supply so i mean this is this is the reality of the situation so I, I think the best thing for people to do 
Um, and I'm talking about ordinary people who don't have a, you know, a, don't work in the energy sector, don't have a degree in energy, nor what I expect them to want to. Um, what I think they need to do is to change their, their way of thinking uh, a little bit, to change their psychology and say, you know, uh, the way that we've lived in, particularly in the West since the end of World War II, this is a very anomalous period in history, a period of, of really unparalleled prosperity, uh, thanks mostly to the relatively low price and abundance of, of, of natural gas and oil. And that's coming to an end. It's not ending tomorrow. It's not a catastrophe yet, but it's coming to an end. And that means that we all have to adapt. And the first way that we all have to adapt is psychologically. We need to start thinking about things differently. Um, I mean, every time I, I, I think, you know, I, 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 need, I need a new uh, tool um, for, you know, something I'm working on. I'll get in my car and go drive, you know, 15 kilometers or whatever to go buy my tool. Uh, we need to stop doing that as individuals we need to say well do i really need that tool today or can i combine that trip with two or three other things that i need my partner needs my children need and do it tomorrow or the day after tomorrow now this is not going to change the world but this is how we we begin to create new habits um as individuals and as societies we simply you know cannot continue to to spend uh, and, and I'm not taking a political position here at all, but I mean, for instance, the, the kinds of the crazy kind of fiscal spending that we're engaged in today, you know, around, say, Ukraine or Israel and Hamas, and we could name a dozen other hot spots in the world. We simply can't afford to be doing that anymore. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that those things are going to stop. <laughs> They're not. But. At some point, you see, this is this is going to affect all of us that that our governments are not going to be able to cut uh, the the services they provide to us in order to afford all of these fiscal expenses. So eventually, they're going to raise our taxes, and we're not going to like that. <laughs> that's going to change. That's going to and and so eventually, we'll start to change our behavior because it's costing too much. To maintain our behavior that's that's where i think we're and and if technology can help well that's great but my sense is that is that our our adjustment is far more fundamental than technology can fix in general it may it may it may be great for one guy with solar panels and and a hydrogen tank but it's not a solution that's going to work for you know for society in general I totally agree with the overall, uh, as, you know, uh, view that uh, you know we have to think about uh, you know using much less energy, and it goes much more fundamental than te technology solutions for for all. I I think we need, of course, a, a technology uh, as well, but it goes much deeper, and it's it's basically a, a, a economic and political change as well, obviously, uh, because we have built an economy on based on uh, growth on a finite planet <laughs> so and, and that's very important to remember